Thanks for coming to Tech Talk C. Uh, today we're going to talk about VS Code tips and tricks. Um, my name is Wade Anderson, and I work on the team as a program manager. Um, just to be clear, because last year I was at Build, and I gave a similar talk to this. And when I started, a whole bunch of people got up and left. And I figured out it was because they thought it was for Visual Studio tips and tricks. Now, this is for Visual Studio Code tips and tricks. Um, so if you need to get up and leave because you thought it was for Visual Studio, that's OK. I won't take offense. Um, so I'm going to talk about some of the most useful and underused tips and tricks. Get, give me an idea of how many of you have heard of VS Code. Raise of hand. OK, a lot of you. How many of you use it uh, daily? OK. So we got a fair amount. For those that are new, I'm going to give you a brief introduction. Um, Visual Studio Code is part of the Visual Studio family. Um, it's a lightweight code editor. If you've used Notepad++, Sublime Text, Atom, you can think that Visual Studio Code is similar there. Um, what, we, what we tried to do, what our vision with the product was, is to bring some of the best from IDEs, like Visual Studio and Eclipse and IntelliJ, and bring it to a lightweight editor experience. So that's what we tried to do here with VS Code. Um, some unique characteristics of it is it's cross-platform, so it'll run on Mac, Linux, and Windows. It's free and open source. Um, we do a lot of our development in the open um, and are really uh, transparent about what we're trying to do and try to involve the community and where we're going with this product. Um, this uh, talk is going to be short, 20 minutes. There's no way I'm going to cover all of the cool things you can do with VS Code. So there's this. Uh, this GitHub repo, it's really easy to find. Just search VS Code tips and tricks, and you'll find it. Um, and it has um, dozens and dozens of different tips and tricks, things I'm not going to cover today. I tried to squash down the 10 um, most important tips and tricks. So uh, tip number one is stay cutting edge uh, by using the insider's version of VS Code. So if you look down here, I'm running um, this green one right here, Visual Studio Code Insiders. Right next to it is Visual Studio Code. This is the month-to-month -month, uh, release version. Um, v VS Code Insiders is cool because we use this to develop the product. Um, and th there's some cool stories of people reporting a bug and then seeing it fixed the next morning when they go in on Insiders. So we release the, um, we build Insiders nightly. So you're getting the latest features and the latest bug fixes really quickly. Um, and now the second one, which is really catered towards those that are new or maybe you've just tried VS Code recently in the last few months. If I go here to help and then welcome, if you've just recently downloaded the product, this will show up for you automatically. Um, let me get the right font here so everyone can see this. Um, this welcome screen has a lot of the, hey, this will get you up to speed quickly built into it, especially this quick link section. So I'm going to go briefly through this. You can see a quick uh, overview of the interface. We don't have a complex interface. It's pretty simple. But this can teach you the vernacular we use and other parts of the product to make things make sense. Um, this color theme, uh, an important part of VS Code is you can customize it to make it look however you want. Um, there's these uh, dozen or so built in automatically. Um, so you can choose the theme that, that you prefer. Or you can go here and install um, literally hundreds of different color themes. And there's a lot of options there. Um, you know, we feel as developers, we spend uh, hours and hours looking at our editors all day. So we wanted to give you the, the most uh, exposure you could to find the right theme for yourself. Um, so that's uh, color themes. Now, this uh, third one, which, is, which I'm a big fan of, is if you're coming from a different product, you can install, a, we call it a key map. So it's a whole package of key bindings. Um, and it's really useful. Say you've used Vim, Sublime Text, Visual Studio, and you've memorized these key bindings. You've built up this sweat equity, this muscle memory. Um, you can actually just go, and here's the Visual Studio one. You can install it, and then you don't have to learn new key bindings. You can just use the key bindings you used with Visual Studio. So it makes it really easy to switch from product to product. Often that's what people do. They run VS Code alongside some other tool that they're using. So that's right here, install keyboard shortcuts. Uh, find and run all commands. 
This one, if there's two things I want you to remember from this talk, it's remember this, this is one of them. Uh, if you go control shift P or command shift P on a Mac, this will open the find and run all commands. And the cool thing about this is every command you can run in VS Code is available right here. And you can just quickly um, start typing to find, oh, you need to find settings. OK, that's right here. It makes it really easy to navigate around the tool and find things that are useful. Um, keyboard shortcut reference, you can go um, download a PDF, put it by your, uh, by your computer. Configure settings. Um, I'll go over a little bit some of the settings a little bit later on, but there's a lot of things you can do to tweak VS Code to make it um, a perfect tool for you. Um, and then this last one, Interactive Playground. This is where if you're brand new, this is a good place to go and start. Um, this will show you some of the things that people don't use that often that we just think are so great. So this, for example, multi-cursor editing. And this is a cool playground because I can go in here and actually just play with it right here. So if I want to do multi-cursor, I can do that. Um, shows how to use IntelliSense, which we have here in VS Code. So I do dot or control space, and we can go up and down and see the different methods for that um, function or object. You can also do these line actions. So if I <clears throat> command I, and then this is just showing me if I do option up and down, or all up and down, I can move that line. So it's a good way to, oh, how do I do things in VS Code? Go to the interactive playground, and you can quickly, in two minutes, see some of the core features, including rename, refactoring, formatting, code folding, errors and warnings. Here's a snippet, so we'll do a try catch or even Emmet, which is a cool uh, U, uh, HTML expander. So there we go. Um, about, about 10 or so here that you can try out in the interactive playground. OK, so um, moving on to number three, I showed you the command palette briefly, but I, this was just so important I want to mention it again. Not only can you see all of the different commands, but say you, you wanted to do this move line up and down. Um, so you type that in, and what's cool is here on the far side, so your guys' is right, my right, um, you can see the key binding for that. This is a great way to start to memorize the key bindings. You can see, oh, I run this command a lot, and then start to remember the key binding to get you faster and more productive. As some of you may know, we, have, um, we built this integrated terminal into VS Code. So I type that into the command palette. I'll do that again so you can see it. Command palette, type new integrated terminal. It shows up here, um, and I can go up and down here. This is just a terminal like I would have on the side. It's built right into the product. Um, and I can do a lot of customizations here. So if I open up um, settings, we'll make sure this is a decent viewport. I can change things like my cursor style. I can change um, terminal integrated. OSX. I can change um, the different shell path that I'm um, pointed to. So you can really make the integrated terminal be as good as the terminal you're using outside of VS Code, which is a cool thing to bring um, where you're doing your coding close to the tools that you're running. Um, that being said, so I'll run this uh, app that I built. We'll run it with this bash command, start. We'll let this load for a second. So I want to show you uh, the next one here on my tips and tricks is, so I run this bash start.sh. This is just like my build script, right? Like I want to get up, start developing. So I run this. It launches a server. It launches my front end um, application. Um, and a really underused feature is this um, thing called task runner in VS Code. So if I go in near the command palette and I type configure task runner, um, if you're using JavaScript technologies, this will be familiar. Things like Grunt and Gulp. There's also MS Build, Maven, .NET Core. This is, these are all templates you can use to integrate uh, VS Code's task runner with your build tools. Now, you might be asking, well, what's the difference between the task runner and this integrated terminal you just showed me? Um, well, it actually allows just for some simpler steps. So you saw down here I ran bash start.sh. I can run this task. I'm going to change the command to bash and the arguments to start.sh. So now I can run this task from the command palette, which is cool, but not that different than if I ran it from the integrated terminal. What I think is 
is really useful though is if I now go to the key to the key bindings file. So this is where you can customize your key bindings. And what I've done here on the left is the default key bindings. So this is just a JSON file with this is how things are listed today. On the right are the custom ones that I have added. And what I can do here is I can go and say, okay, when I press F5, I want you to run this task um, and we're giving it the specific command I want it to run. Now, what I think is really cool about this, if you think about some things you like in IDE land, some things where you can just click one button and things start to happen, you can make that happen right here in VS Code. And it's all in JSON files, so it's easy to check in and share with your team. Um, so if I go here, I'm going to kill the application, and now I'm going to do run F, whoop, I'm going to run F5. And this will start the application just with a key binding press, which is pretty cool. It basically makes this, OK, I run my tools from the terminal all the time. I can now integrate it with the task runner and assign those to key bindings to make things even faster. Um, let's see here. So this is just building. OK, so this app here, um, how many Star Trek fans do we have? OK, a handful. How many Star Wars fans? It looks like the Star Wars fans are winning out. Okay, so this is an arm wrestling contest between Star Wars and Star Trek. Okay, Star Trek wins that round. Um, what we're going to do here next is to show when we get in, we're actually writing some code. So we're going to go here to app.js. Um, and you'll notice the little squigglies. So this is coming from um, VS Code has some built-in linting capabilities. So this is things like if you have some things wrong with the syntax, we're going to mark that as an error. Um, but you can also install these extensions. So I'm going to show you some of the extensions I have installed. I have this extension installed called ESLint. So if you use JavaScript, ESLint is familiar. It's a really popular linting tool. Um, and with ESLint, I can go in and customize, hey, what errors and warnings is VS Code going to show me? So I have customized where ESLint will mark if I'm missing a semicolon as an error. So it's going to mark this here. I think you guys can see that red squiggly there. Um, and I can go in and fix this. I can also see where are the different errors and warnings um, provided here by the ESLint. You can imagine other linters can be integrated in the same way. And then I can go and use the light bulb to fix this. So fix this semi problem. And we'll fix that there. We can save it. Um, so VS Code has the flexibility to work with a whole ecosystem of linters. And it gives you the customization. Here's my ESLint um, configuration file. I'm saying, hey, mark a semi, a two means an error um, for ESLint. It allows you to really customize, hey, what do we want to mark stylistically as errors, as warnings, um, or even things that are wrong uh, that, that we want to enforce across our teams. Um, jump here to where we're going with the demo. So that was number six. Number seven is um, to really focus with Zen mode. This is one a popular one request by the community. So I'm going to see how it looks there. OK. So basically what it does is it strips out everything else. You're focused. You, you are in Zen mode. You're just writing some code. So we're going to go here to Franchise JS. And what I want to add is I'm going to add, um, let's keep track of how many wins Star Trek has versus Star Wars. And this, uh, if you're not familiar, this is called a JSX. It's a syntactical sugar for things like creating uh, HTML elements. So we're going to do style equals. And you'll notice I get, um, I get the IntelliSense just like you would expect um, when you're in some of these larger IDEs. So I'm getting this. And we'll do wins. And let's make sure, close that. So pretty cool. So out of the box, you're going to get IntelliSense for JavaScript and TypeScript. And then we'll toggle out of Zen mode here so I can show you extent. Then you can install other extensions. We'll go to show popular extensions for other languages that you use. So if you use C Sharp, install the C Sharp extension. Python, C++, Go, PowerShell. These are all extensions that have lots and lots of downloads. You can see 2.1 million for the, um, the Python extension. 
um, but it brings the basic capabilities like IntelliSense and debugging um, that you uh, don't get in a normal text editor. Okay, so let's, uh, let's verify that that worked. So we'll do this again. Star Trek wins again. And Star Trek wins again. So uh, two wins there for Star Trek, so that worked for us. Um, but now I'm curious, why Star Trek's won every single time I've ran this? There's got to be something wrong. Um, so we're going to go here. This button right here is the debug icon. Um, you're, you're canceling out the bugs, what we're going for. Um, really easy to set up. You go here and click this button here, and this creates your launch.json file. You'll notice most of, almost all our configuration files are JSON files. We want it to make it easy to share, um, easy to check into version control. Um, we go here. Uh, this is, by the way, the other, I said there's two key bindings I think you should remember, the first one being to open the command palette. The second one is control space. When you're in the editor, this triggers IntelliSense. So I can see now a hint, hey, here's the different configurations for this debugging protocol. So I want to do this attach to process. Now this is a cool uh, debugging feature that I really like, is we go here, make sure this is saved. I'm going to select Attach to Process, and I'm going to click Play. And now it's saying, hey, we detect there's three node processes running. So um, which one do you want to attach to? Well, I want to attach to this one. This is my server running. And you can see here I have the pause, and this thing means disconnect. Um, and now where I want to go is server.js. And we'll set a breakpoint there. You can do a couple different things with breakpoints. Um, if you go in here, you can make them conditional, so you can hit them by the expression, so some equality expression or something like that, or the hit count. I'm just going to use a normal um, breakpoint. Let's see if I can get out of that. There we go. Okay. Um, and now we're going to go back over to our app, and oh, I uh, I disconnected the process. There we go by saving it. There we go. Oh, I must add a stray one there. Now, we're, okay, so we hit the breakpoint. So you can, a uh, process is already running. You attach to the process. You can set a breakpoint and hit that process and try to understand what's going on. So we're trying to get to the bottom of why does Star Trek win every single time. We can step in here. You can see everything you'd expect from a normal debugging experience. You can hover over in this debug console. We get IntelliSense so we can print out and explore objects and kind of see what's going on. Um, and we're going to step in here and then we'll step into the function. Okay, so this is my, my simple brain dead uh, wrestle uh, algorithm. It's going to calculate the karma for the two different franchises and it's going to produce those. And then we're going to get to which is our error here. Looks like someone did X franchise uh, equals Star Wars return Y franchise. So that looks like the issue there. Um, here's something cool. So I installed this other extension called Annotator, and I can go in here and say, um, let's see if we can see who made that change. It was actually made by Star Wars is Dumb. OK, so we can go in here and see that author. Um, so I'm going to go in here and just remove this guy. We'll save it. Um, and NodeMon will, will restart the process. And let's go in here and see if Star Wars can win. Star Wars wins. Great. Um, w so the last tip here is we go in and we can do use Git really uh, quickly and efficiently. You can see I click this version control icon or source control. I can see the diff really easily. So there's my semicolon I added. Here's the paragraph tag I added. And here's the removal of that faulty logic. Um, and we can just add these files like this and write our commit message, restore order to the galaxy, and enter that commit. And there we go. There's a whole bunch of options, pulling, pushing. You can do version control is well supported. Not only Git, but any of the other major version control systems. Um, so that wraps it up here. I think that got me through all 10. Um, so those are the top 10 uh, most useful and underused tips and tricks for VS Code. 
Um, again, you can check out more at VS Code Tips and Tricks GitHub repo. Uh, check out our product. We're over at the booth over by the developer tools. And um, try it and let us know what you think. We're on Twitter as well. So thank you, guys.